Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Control Net for Video is here, and it's not anything like the automatic 11.11 plugins that claim to use Control Net to give you video. Those use frame interpolation and Control Net looking at individual frames, and this model takes a whole new approach to this and has absolutely blown my mind. So we're gonna talk about the paper, we're gonna show the hugging face space where you can play with this right away, and yeah, let's get into it. So the source for this, Sylvian Filoni on Twitter, follow him for more updates here. He's the one who produced this implementation. And to be clear, this is a implementation of a paper that was published in May. Yeah, and Sylvian was not the author or co-author of this paper. So this is his interpretation, it's working, and it's very cool to see another incredible adaptation of this technology moving forward. We've seen a lot of it with text to video in the last week or so, and we're moving into even more complex forms of video going forward. So the, what this paper is called is Control Video, Training Free Controllable Text to Video Generation. So it's not a huge surprise that this model is being referred to casually as Control Video. And what I like here is that uh, AK has actually started summarizing abstracts from academic papers with a internal Tune GPT. So we're gonna go over that. The abstract here, it's written in like pretty broken English. So I'm going to pick a few things from here that I think are interesting. Basically, what this paper is doing is saying we wanna create a new kind of text to video control net implementation uh, that isn't as hamstringed on uh, the amount of video training you would have needed previously or hamstringed by how difficult um, temporal inference is. Control video adapted from control net, so it is based on control net, leverages coarsely structural consistency from input motion sequences. So it's trained on motion and not necessarily raw video. And if you think about it, the importance of control net when you're like dragging the stick figures and changing pose is the, what makes it look realistic is really motion mapping and less kind of video shape mapping like you'd see in text-to-video tools like um, Runway ML or Pika or Xeroscope. And they do a good job at movement, but curiously, text-to-video models, just because of the way they're made, at times will struggle with motion. And Pika got really close to understanding this motion, but ControlNet takes a different approach and uses motion as one of its core inputs or pose as one of its core inputs. Firstly, to ensure the appearance coherence between frames, which previously was done with a very rough inference. Uh, you can also use this to smooth video from a lot of other text to video tools. So they say control video adds full cross frame interaction and self attention module. So they're doing something pretty similar to what these automatic 11.11 plugins did, which was just applying stable diffusion or control net to every frame and then stitching the frames back together. Actually, zero scope pretty much works this way. However, uh, control video is adding in way more context to the calculation going on when you're going from frame to frame and understanding how much something should change what distance something should change, you know, how focus might change, those kinds of things. So they call these self-attention modules. Secondly, to mitigate the flicker effect, uh, which again, I I've done some content on how to reduce this with some existing uh, AI tools. To mitigate the flicker effect, it introduces an interleaved frame smoother that employs frame interpolation on alternated frames. This basically means that it can look as far as like five frames ahead and then randomizes that so that you get a, a nice distribution after the fact that in the end looks like smooth video. Finally, to produce log videos efficiently, it utilizes a hierarchical sampler that separately synthesizes each short clip with holistic coherency. It'll be interesting kind of what they define that as. Uh, empowered with these modules, control video outperforms the state of the art on extensive motion prompt pairs quantitatively and qualitatively. Notably, thanks to the efficient designs, which is really the biggest breakthrough here in my opinion, it generates both short and long videos within several minutes using one NVIDIA 2080 Ti. So we're using, by modern standards, a pretty ancient GPU to do things that a lot of these other companies claimed you could only do on H100s or very advanced GPUs. And I think this is cool because the efficiency of designs is becoming more popular as the supply of GPUs is clearly becoming constrained. And being able to do it on something um, as old as a 2080 Ti is really impressive. Like obviously the video part is impressive. Um, the re-implementation of ControlNet is very impressive along with these very um, targeted improvements in very specific areas like frame interpolation and smoothing. But the coolest thing to me is like, above all this, uh, you can run it on a pretty ancient GPU. Uh, I would say a GPU that would be um, a pretty dismal experience running even Stable Diffusion 1.4 on. And yeah, so this is awesome. And again, their demo here, I think is pretty cool. You know, gives you a pretty good understanding of what 
it looks like. But uh, yeah, the link to the Hugging Face is below and I'm going to upload a video now and let's see what we can. All right, so I've actually uploaded a video that I made with Pika yesterday and there's not a ton going on. It's just kind of an astronaut floating around. I'll play it again here. A lot of these models happen to be trained in a lot of anime because there are big data sets available for this. So I'll just say, um, great. And how many frames? Okay, frames you want to process. So this is 24 FPS. So we'll just do, we'll just do 24, why not? And I think this is running, yeah, so this, this is running on an A10G. So by no means a really fast GPU. It's still a sort of enterprise level NVIDIA card, I guess you could say. And what I don't know is if their pseudocode implementation will actually perform on par with this third party implementation, because this is implemented with PyTorch, which makes sense because that's kind of the de facto tooling for a lot of these diffusion models. And while that's working, let me see if there's actually, okay. So I wanna see if they actually, all right, cool. So they claim the code is available here, and it might be. Okay, so they basically gave you a basic implementation. Interesting. So there is actually an official implementation. It is important to note that the implementation on Hugging Face is different, but this is still pretty impressive. Charming Flamingo Wanderer, okay. Or you can do animals, you can do cars, boats, it has some thinking to do. Yeah, so clearly it was trained with a lot of cars, animals, and hiking, and birds. Okay, these are cool. These are cool. Not as, you know, temporal as Pika Labs, but interesting nonetheless. Very interesting. Very interesting. And it's also important to note that they actually cite uh, Diffusers Control Net and Tune a video. And I actually haven't used Tune a video before. I wonder, this is pretty old, but interesting. Huh, yeah, so this Hulk, I like a lot because there, there's, there's a lot of movement. You know, it, what's curious here is, you know, for Pika Labs claiming they're so good at movement, this, this is actually pretty close to it because we have this guy walking here. So we have the legs, you know, one foot in front of the other. Of course, kind of what's interesting here is common with runway ML and some simpler text to video models, you'll see that in every case, the camera is static while also following the subject. So only the background is actually moving. Like here, the subject is staying in the same place and his legs are moving. So it turns out that this model can actually only accept square images, which is actually not very surprising knowing how a lot of diffusion models work. I also just ended up using one of their stock inputs, so you guys can try this as well. Uh, again, I just used the same demo prompt, so Studio Ghibli anime style. We set it to 24 frames, and this is what we got. So, actually not bad at all. More coherent, I think, than Pika would have been if I gave it this prompt. And it'll be really interesting to see once Pika has kind of a video to video or image to video sense. And, you know, the idea with ControlNet, right, is that at times there are better ways to interpolate or express motion than in a prompt. Because if I wanted to describe this kind of movement in text in the way that like a clip prompt could be understood, that would be really hard. So the idea is providing more information in a different input or being able to look at frame interpolation, which of course the difference between frames is an effect motion and the importance there is being able to identify subject and then understand how they're moving. And I think control video does that exceptionally well especially even in just this case, even in just this case with a guy doing the moonwalk backwards with granted very little to zero detail in the background. So clearly this is kind of cherry picked because the subject moving is, because the subject is clearly distinguished from the background. The only real challenge here is that his pants are black and most of the background is black and clearly the model can still understand that those are legs moving back and forth. And yeah, I think it's pretty cool. So as always, if you learned something from this or you like this video, please like and subscribe. It helps us out a ton and we'll see you in the next video.